Hey guys, this is the second video on naming of organic compounds and what we'll do is we'll start off by naming alkanes and then halogenoalkanes and then alkenes moving on to alcohols and other functional groups. But to name even alkanes, what we'll do is we first draw uh, some alkanes whose names are given to us and then we will write out the names of some of the organic molecules. So we we'll start off the back with a compound called 2-methylpentane. Now the way this works is we'll identify the parent chain that's in the stem. So here we've got the stem of the compound. These are your prefix. These are your substituents. And this is your carbon main chain. And the pent tells me that it has five carbons in the main chain. And ane tells me all the carbon-carbon bonds are single. So if I have to make an outline of the chain, it is going to be one, two, three, four, five carbons long. And from any one end, the second carbon has to have a methyl group on it. So second carbon having a methyl group. So if I go from, if I count carbon number one, carbon number two, three, four, and five, then the second carbon has a methyl group. And that would be 2-methylpentane. The, and then we can practice drawing skeletal formula for all of these. So there'll be one, two, three, four, five, and a second carbon having a methyl group. That would be the, methyl, uh, the skeletal formula of 2-methylpentane. And the five carbons and this. If you want to know what you want to be the structural formula for this, it'll be two CH3s on carbon number two. So two CH3s on carbon number two, that's CH, because the fourth bond is an H. Here, the two other bonds are HS. I'm not drawing them and displayed because it's just too much work. Third, third carbon, then the fourth one, and then the fifth one. So this will be the uh, structural formula for 2-methylpentane, and this will be the skeletal formula of 2-methylpentane, and this will be the basic structure of 2-methylpentane. Then, let's go to the next one. Okay, this fellow is 2,2-dimethylbutane. So let's dissect the name again. Now this part of the main name is your stem and stem suffix, which is your parent carbon chain. And the part I'm underlining in yellow, this part is your all your substituents. Clearly you have dimethyl, that means there are two methyl groups, and one of them is on two, and the other one is also on the carbon number two. So first you make the main chain. How many carbons is that? That's four. So you make butane, one, two, three, four. And if you number all of the carbons, carbon number one, carbon number two, carbon number three, carbon number four, then carbon number two has two methyl groups. So one, and two drawn on the carbon number two. So this is my structure of 2,2-dimethylbutane. Two, two to draw it any particular way, if I'm drawing it in, in the structural formula way, carbon number two has two methyl groups and a methyl group as part of the main chain. So it has three methyl groups, though two are substituents and one is part of the main chain. In the structural formula, all three can be combined to written as CH3 thrice. On carbon number two, which is a C, carbon number three, that is a CH2, and carbon number four, that's a CH3. Now this will be the structural formula of 2,2-dimethylbutane. And the skeletal formula for this would be, there are one, two, three, four carbons, one, two, three, four, one, that's carbon number one, carbon number two, carbon number three, carbon number four. And carbon number two has two methyl groups. So one I'll make on top and one on the bottom. A little slightly slant to represent a tetrahedral layout. That's all. So this will be the skeletal formula of 2,2-dimethylbutane. Then, moving on to another name. This one is 4-ethyl-2-methyl-hexane. So my parent chain is how many carbons? Six. And my substituents are two different types, an ethyl and a methyl. The ethyl is on carbon number four, and the methyl is on carbon number two. With six carbons, it's a pretty ca long carbon-carbon chain. So I've got one, two, <clears throat> three, four, five, and six. And I can even number them as one, two, three, four, five, and six carbons in the main chain. Then I've got a methyl and an ethyl. Methyl on carbon number two and ethyl on carbon number four. So I'll draw a methyl on carbon number two, that's a CH3. And an ethyl on carbon number four, and an ethyl group is basically a CH2, CH3 group. 
is basically an ethane with one less hydrogen, hence an ethyl group. So this is my basic structure of the compound. Now I've got, in the, in the, in the structural formula, it'll be quite funny to draw this, by the way, because this carbon has two CH3s, and this carbon has a CH2CH3 here and a CH2CH3 here. So you don't be surprised if you see this as written as CH3 twice on carbon number two, it's an H also. Carbon number three is a CH2. And carbon number four is a CH with two CH3, CH2 twice groups. Even though one of them is a branch and one of them is a main chain, but it's written like this in the structural formula. And the skeletal for this would be six in a main chain. So one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And carbon number two is a methyl group. Three, uh, and then this is carbon number one, carbon number two, carbon number three, carbon number four has an ethyl group. So the ethyl is drawn as one and two like that. So this will be the skeletal formula of this. So you're learning skeletal and naming and structural formula all together. Okay, along one. Here we got two six six trimethyl octane. So this is the last one I'm name uh, drawing from name, and then we start naming these guys. So this one is how many carbons? This is eight carbons long and three methyl groups as branches. So these three are branches and it's an eight carbon compound. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. That's a pretty long chain. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. <clears throat> and I number them as carbon number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So now carbon number two has a methyl group and six and six have a methyl group. So I'll draw a methyl group on carbon number two and two methyl groups in carbon number six. So that's my compound. If I'm drawing the skeletal formula for this, it's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And carbon number two has a CH3 right here. And carbon number three, four, five, six. Six has two CH3. So one I'll draw on top and one I'll draw a little slanted. And that's my skeletal formula. If I'm looking for my condensed formula, the carbon number two has two CH3 groups. CH, CH2, CH2, CH2. This carbon has two CH3s and a CH2 and a CH3. So let's draw, I, mean, I can write that also for you guys. That would be, there'll be first two CH3s on carbon number two, which is a CH. Carbon number three is a CH2, carbon number four is a CH2, carbon number five is a CH2. Then carbon number six is, I'll just scroll to the right uh, a bit. Carbon number six is just C with two CH3s and seven is CH2 and eight is also going to be is a CH3. That's a pretty long name. And sometimes when you get this now, sometimes when you get CH2s in between repeating themselves, you can also use parentheses for them also. Like sometimes you might see them as CH3 twice on a CH with CH2 thrice, then C, CH3 twice, CH2, CH3. Sometimes they can do that also. But don't worry, you're not going to be getting this bigger molecule. We did this so that you guys understand how to write the all the th all the three types of formulae and write the knee, decide the structure from the formula. All right? So now let's try to name some molecules that are already drawn for us, some alkanes, basic alkanes, all right? So we start off by naming alkanes. Now in naming alkanes, there are four steps that need to be taken to name alkanes. And we start off with step number one. The first step is to find the parent carbon chain in the alkane. So I'm going to show you a carbon chain Two, uh, two drawings of the same carbon chain to show you what's the right way of finding the main carbon chain and what's the wrong way. Your job is to find the longest unbroken carbon-carbon straight chain. And it's only done by trial and error. And the job is done very easily by placing a pencil on one end and without picking it up, counting the carbon atoms in one direction. What I mean is, I can start from here and this would be one count. That's three in a chain. This is one count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's an eight carbon chain. And then you might think, well, this is also one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And this one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now, the longest is, and I'm going to highlight that in uh, 
orange is this carbon chain right here now just to show you what isn't is that you could have gone this way and if you see the diagram on the right I'm highlighting a carbon chain that's seven carbons long the only problem with this is not that I'm going up not that it's not straight or a line it's just that this one on the left has eight carbons and the one on the right in the longest chain that I've highlighted the way it's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So that's the only thing wrong with this. If though going horizontal resulted in seven carbons and going this way resulted in eight carbons, then this would have been the parent chain. So the parent carbon chain is the longest chain of carbon atoms that you can count without from one end to the other end without uh, lifting up the pencil. It doesn't matter if it looks straight to you or if it has bends. That should not be a consideration. The consideration should be the most number of carbon atoms I can fit from one end to the other end, lining up with my pencil without lifting it up. Let me show you three different ways I've drawn carbon chains and you can recognize the fact that these guys have uh, what's the longest chain? Now look at this particular molecule on the left. I've got, I can go from this way, this, 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 and I get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. But one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, this way and this way. So this is eight right here, this way, that I'm highlighting with my orange color. Now when I look at this, the straight looks like, oh, I got one, two, three, four, five, six, but that six is not the longest chain. It's in fact one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That is my longest carbon, carbon, unbroken chain. Now the one on the right, it might look like one, two, three, four, five, or one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. But that's still not the longest. The longest would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Still eight. But you see how the eights have been connected? So it doesn't have to look like it's making a straight line. It could be like this also. It's like three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All of these three, these are their parent carbon chains in these three molecules. That's the first rule. All right, I'm not naming them, I'm just giving the rules first and then we'll apply them to naming them. All right, now what if you have two different ways of counting the longest parent chain? Then what do you do? Then you move on to step number two. And in step number two, what you want to do is you want to count that carbon chain that has the more, that has more substituents. Because when you have more substituents, you have actually least, less complicated substituents. Let me show you what I mean. Here I have the same molecule drawn twice to highlight my point. In one form, it might look like, let's count one way. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven carbons. And if I count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven also. So there are two ways I can count the carbon chain. One looks like horizontal straight, looks pretty obvious that should be the case. And one, I do it less this way. So one is horizontal and one is not horizontal, but they both have seven carbon atoms. Now in the left case, there is only one substituent right there. That's it. On the right one, I've got one substituent here and two here. Now the rule states that you want to choose this one, the one on the right, because it has more substituents. And I'll tell you why that is the case. Because now if you look at the substituents, I've got pretty simple substituents. I've got a methyl group and an ethyl group. When I have less substituents, I'm actually complicating the substituent groups. Now this one has actually become a, a branch on a branch. And that complicates it. So when I have a choice, I'll take the one where I have less complicated substituents and it's clearly a rule simple yeah, hai, ki you want to choose that parent chain that will give you more substituents. So in this case, this would be wrong and this would be right. So now this is my parent chain and these two are my substituents. That's the second thing. So first step, find the longest carbon carbon chain. Now if there are two options for that, you will choose the, that particular chain that will give you more substituents versus less. Then step number three is to name and number the substituents. So let's say I have this example. Now I made it simpler just to find the main parent chain first. So the parent chain is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight, and I've got three substituents. So that's my eight parent chain right there. And it has one, two, three substituents. Our job is to number the substituents. Now, how do I number them? I can start counting from the left or I can count from the right. Now, if I count from the left, and I'll write that in, let's say, green, I get carbon number one, carbon number two, carbon number three, carbon number four, carbon number five, number six, 
number seven and number eight. And that shows me my one, one of my substituents was on carbon number three, the second was on carbon number four, and the third one was on, was on carbon number seven. But if I count from the right, and I'll color that in blue, I got carbon number one, carbon number two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now, if I count from the left, my first substituent is on carbon number three. But if I count from the right, my first substituent is on carbon number two. And it's all about the first substituent. No matter what it is, from either side, I'm going to count whichever side gives me the gives me the lower number on the first, first substituent. So here I get carbon number three on my first substituent from the left, or carbon number two would be the first substituent from the right. Hence, that's where I count from. I count from the right. That's the start of the molecule. And so this group is ca on carbon number two, this one's on carbon number five, and this is on carbon number six. And since this, these are hydrocarbons only, now what are these three uh, branches or substituents? Let's label them. The first one on carbon number two is a methyl. And uh, carbon number five is two carbons long. That would be an ethyl group. And on carbon number six, which is a, a one carbon group again, a methyl group. So now I have two methyl groups and one ethyl group. Now, so two methyl groups will be dimethyl and one ethyl will be a ethyl. So my methyls will be should have been should be called two comma six dimethyls. That's my two comma six dimethyls. And my ethyl is on five. So it's five ethyl. All right. And my parent chain is eight carbon long. So it's octane. So that's my parent chain, octane. And now the fourth step only is to combine all of these together. But the way combining all of them is that the substituent should be named alphabetical first, not the lowest number first, but the alphabetic first. Alphabetize them, ignoring the preferences, prefixes. So this is a met ethyl group and a methyl group. Even though methyl has a smaller number, in name, the ethyl comes first. So in step four, I'll just combine all the names together. So the combination would be, step four would be combining the names, all right? So all you gotta do is combine them in alphabetical order for the substituents. So the parent chain is an octane, and the substituents are methyl and ethyl. So the ethyl comes first. So this would be actually be 5 ethyl, then dash 2 comma 6 dimethyl octane. So I'll make some space here to write that. So that's how we come up with the name. All right. I'll just rule on some examples right now. Just scrolling down to the first one. Let's take a look at this molecule. Now, how would I name this? I'll find the longest chain of carbon atoms. I got one, two, three, four, five, six, or one, two, three, four, five, six, or one, two, three, four, five, six. Now, what's the difference? In the horizontal one, I get three substituents. This one, I get uh, also three substituents. And this way, I get also three substituents because I get this, this, and this. So any of the methods is fine. So here I'll just take this as my parent chain. And if I do that, then what do I have? Now this comes across a problem because now when I take this my parent chain, then when I start count numbering it from this side, it becomes the first substituent is in carbon number two. And from this side also, the first substituent is in carbon number two. Now what do I do? So what I'll do is I'll bring up a second example of the same molecule on the right hand side and show you how the two different namings can be done. So now on the one on the left, I'll start counting from the left. This is carbon number one, carbon number two, three, four, five, and six. On the right, I'll count from the right. One, two, three, four, five, six. Now, if I count from the left, the first substitute is on carbon number two. If I count from the right, the first substitute is on carbon number two. So when it's a tie from either side, then you look for the next substituent from that side. So on the left, the second substituent is coming on carbon number three. But if I had counted from the right, the second substituent isn't coming on carbon number four, which makes that the not the right one because if you want the smaller possible number. So the first substituent is the same from either sides because here the first one is on carbon number two 
and on the right is also from carbon number two. Then I look at my second substituent from this each side, and from counting from the left, it's on coming on carbon number three, but counting from the right is coming on carbon number four. Hence, the name three would be better than four. That's what the, that's how we choose. So now this is the right uh, numbering, and then I label my substituents, which are actually three methyl groups. So now the name will also contain trimethyl. And what positions do they have? They have positions 2, 3, and 5. So 2, comma, 3, comma, 5, trimethyl. And the parent chain had how many carbons? 6, so it's a hex. All bonds are single, so it's an ane. So 2, 3, 5, trimethyl. Hex is the parent chain, and it's single bond, so it's ane. Substituents, parent chain, the carbon-carbon double bonds. This one is called 2, 3, 5, trimethyl, hexane. Let's look at another example now. Let's look at this molecule. This molecule has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 in this chain, or 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And in both cases, it gives me two substituents. This one horizontal gives me these two, and this one gives me down. Now, so that I can choose either or, so I'll choose the one that's horizontal. It's just easier to, do, to deal with life like that, right? So I got that right there. So if I count from the left, I got 1, 2, 3. My first substituent is on carbon number 3 this way. But if I count from here, the first substituent is also on carbon number 3. Again, the same dilemma. So what do I do? I have to move this on the side, bring up another version of the same molecule. So I've got two identical versions. And again, the left one I'll count from the left. And I get carbon number 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. On the right, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So which of the two is the right way of naming it? Because the left one may the first substituent is on carbon number 3. On the right one, the first substituent is also on carbon number 3. And the second is on 5, and here the second one is on also on 5. So I've got 3, 5 here, and 3, 5 here. And now I'm stuck. Then, then when there's no other possibility left, then we look at the alphabetical order. We identify the two alkyl groups. In this case, one of them is ethyl, and one of them is methyl. And what you decide is that, well, then I want to give the guy that comes early in the alphabetical order the smaller number because there's no other way to decide. So that's the rule that we've set up for ourselves in naming. Because it's a naming convention we've set up to understand the names of molecules, to understand, understand how we can draw them. So it's since our decision, that's the decision that the committee had taken. And that's what we do. So when nothing else can differentiate them, then we look at the alphabetical order. And on the left molecule, the guy that comes first in the alphabetical order gets number three. And the molecule on the right, the guy that comes second in the alphabetical order comes number three, or the, f or, the or E in this case comes gets number five, which is the first guy. So that comes out to wrong, and this one is right. Therefore, that's the way we name them this way. So the convention now becomes, now what's the name for this guy now? It's a seven carbon chain, so it's a heptane. And I've got my two functional, my two substituents are methyl and ethyl. Ethyl gets number three, methyl gets number five. So I get called, I get to call this three dash ethyl, then dash five dash methyl. Again, understand that between numbers and letters, there's always a dash. Between multiple numbers, there'll be a comma. Between multiple letters, there'll be no space. So this is three dash ethyl dash me five dash methyl heptane, also known as three ethyl five methyl heptane. All right, so let's name some more alkanes. Let's look at this long fellow. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight in this chain. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven this way. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven this way. So my longest chain that seems to not, just the longest chain that seems to not be the most complicated because it's going to be the most substituents and the most carbons in a chain are, in this case, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And if I count from the left, the first substitute is on carbon number two. If I count from the right, it's on carbon number three. So I'll count from the left. And so my numbering becomes one carbon, two carbon, three carbon, four, five, six, seven, eight. And my branches are on literally carbon number two, carbon number five, and carbon number six. And what are my branches and my substituents? I got methyl here, I got an ethyl here, and I got a methyl here. So when I name them, I realize that there's two methyls, hence a dimethyl. And the dimethyls are 2, 6. So I've got to have 2, 6 dimethyls. And that's one part of my name. Then ethyl is on 5. So 5 ethyl. And my parent chain is 8 carbon, so it's octane. 
So my parent chain is octane, and I write it down. And I got two substituents, two six dimethyl and five ethyl. What's written first is alphabetical order. Even though numbering is done differently, it's written first as five ethyl because E comes before M, and then two comma six dimethyl octane. Okay. So five ethyl, two comma six dimethyl octane. Now let's look at some uh, skeletal formulae to name them because I just like to name them. So let's talk about this fellow. So I count this carbon number one. If I count it this way, carbon number one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So the easiest is this is your parent chain. This right here. And if I count from the left, the first substitute is on carbon number one, two, three, and four. Right? One, two, three, and four. Both the same. Then I look at the and there's no one. So the first one is four, then five. But this way, the first one is four and then five. So again, the same dilemma. Then I look at the names. What are the two functional, uh, what are the two substituents? This substituent is a one carbon methyl substituent. And this one is ethyl. So which comes first in the alphabetical order? E. So that wins out now, finally, when nothing else ha works for us. So this is on carbon number. I want to give ethyl the smaller number, so I'll count from this side. And this way, ethyl gets a smaller number than methyl. So this one, the name becomes, therefore, 4-ethyl, uh, then 5-methyl, and then the parent chain has 8 carbons, so it's octane. All right? And that's how you name this. Now let's look at another formula, a pretty long one, right here. How would I name this? Well, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Or one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. No, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. No. So this looks like the longest chain right here. Now, if I count from this side, the first substituent is one, two, three, four, fifth pay. From here, it's one, two, third pay. Because I've already identified these are my substituents, one, two, and three. So from the right, this first one gets the, the third one is the shorter number. From the left, it'll be on carbon number five. So I'll count from the left. One, two, three, four. And then five, six, seven, eight. So what are my add-ons? My substituents, two methyls and one ethyl. So the two methyls are on what carbons? They're dimethyls and they're carbon number three and carbon number four. So I say three, four, dimethyl. And the ethyl is on carbon number four. So it's a four ethyl group also. And my parent chain is 8 carbons long, so it's octane. So now I name, put them all together, so octane and these two. Between these two, what's written is the alphabetical one for it. So it's 4 ethyl, 4 dash ethyl, then dash 3 dash 4, 3 comma 4 dash dimethyl, because those are the two positions of the methyl groups. And the parent long chain is an octane. So that's my name of this compound. Let's look at another one. Look at this guy. Now here, it's fun, because now when I look at this, oh, the obvious one looks like the one in the center. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. But then seven gives me how many substituents? One, two, and this big gigantic guy, three. And I realized, okay, hmm, that's a problem, because this is a complicated one, because it's a branch substituent, because it's going this way and this way and this way. So I got seven this way. Let's see if I can find a longer one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, this is also seven. And if I do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, then I get four substituents. I get, if I do this one, let me see if I can outline it for you. This one, if I do this one, uh, yeah, right there. It's a nice little snake, but I get four substituents. So one, two, three, four. So that's what wins out. This is your parent chain. It's an awkward looking one if I circle it like this, but you know, you get the idea. So now, where do I count from? If that's my parent chain, then the first branch is from this side is on carbon number one, two, or three. But from this side is on carbon number one, carbon number two. So this side wins. So I number from that side. So how do I number? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I number them now. Now I identify my, uh, my branches. This one is a methyl. Uh, one carbon long, this is a methyl, also one carbon. This is also a methyl. So I got three methyls in this case. And this one is one carbon, two carbon, three carbon. So it's a propane alkyl group called a propyl group. 
So I've got methyl, methyl, and propyl. Methyls are to the therefore that makes them trimethyl. And number one positions, positions number two, three, and five. So I've got through three, five, trimethyl is one add on or branch, three branches. And the propyl is on carbon number four. So I've got a four propyl too. And between the names of the branches, propyl and methyl, the meth M comes before P. And it's a seven carbon chain, so it's a heptane. So the name would have to be in this case, I'll, uh, between M and P, M comes first. So it's two, three, five commas and dash trimethyl. Then dash four propyl. Then the variant chain is heptane. Pretty long, eh? That's what we have. Another one. So this is the last example for alkanes. Let's check this one out. So I got one, two, three, four, five in the chain. And I got these four branches. So it looks like that's the straight one. One, two, three, four, five. Now I, I've got these four branches. They're all one carbon long. So they're methyls. And then there are, now if I count from this side is two comma four and I count from this side is two comma four. So it doesn't matter now. The molecule is completely symmetrical. So I could have counted from either side. And I got four methyls. So it's a tetramethyl. And how many, which positions the methyls have to ha are having? Two on twos and two on fours. So it's two, two, four, four trimethyl. And the parent chain is five carbon long. So the name is two comma, two comma, four comma, four. Tetramethyl, because there are four methyl groups. And a five carbon chain is pentane. Okay. So I think you've named enough complicated straight chain hydrocarbons. Now let's look at how to name cyclic compounds. So... Here I have two cyclic, uh, two diagrams of the same cyclic compound. This represents uh, uh, all. This represents six carbons in a uh, in a cyclic chain, all single bonded. One, two, three, four, five, six. So you'd call this main chain in orange a cyclohexane, cyclohexane, and the two CH three groups will be called branches here. The one difference is how do we name the cyclic compound? So you decide which of the two branches is numbered one in this case. Since these two are methyl, it doesn't matter which of them is branched one. So you can take this one or this one. In the end, the name is going to be the same. And let's say you take the top one. And when you take the top one as carbon number one, you can then go clockwise and number your carbons. And you realize that the methyl is on carbon number one and carbon number three. Or you could have taken the top one and numbered it counterclockwise and if you do that right here then you'd get carb methyl on carbon number one and carbon number five so you take the shorter route so obviously you would not go with one five you'd go with one three so the right name for this would be one three uh, dimethyl cyclohexane dimethyl that would be your branches cyclohexane all right now, if you had two different branches, then you would have to either take the ethyl as number one and methyl as... So, if you take this as carbon number one, then methyl gets carbon number three. Or, if you take methyl as carbon number one, then the ethyl gets carbon number three. In cyclic chains, there is no smaller number. It's one, three, and one, three. So, what you do is, you again go back to the alphabetical order thing. So, the two branches are ethyl and methyl. So you'll give ethyl the smaller number. In that regard, then this becomes 1-ethyl, 3-methyl. And this would have been 3-ethyl, 1-methyl. So you'd go with the ethyl having the smaller number. So the name would become 1-ethyl and 3-methyl cyclohexane. Okay, so that ends the naming for alkanes. Now... Haloalkanes are very similar to alkanes in the naming. The only difference is that the halogens are your substituents. So I'll quick, quickly wrap them up also because they're very similar. The only thing that you got to account for now is that you got a halogen also. It won't change anything, but it'll just be another substituent that you have to worry about, just like methyl and ethyl. So what do I mean by that is, let's take a look at this molecule that I've drawn right here. Now, in haloalkanes, I know it's a haloalkane because I see a halogen in the whole alkane series. And I know it's an alkane because all the carbon-carbon bonds are single. So now, I've just got to treat the, the halogen like any other branch that I have. And I look at this molecule, I actually only have two branches. I've got the CH3 
and I've got the CL. So if I count from the left, the first substituent comes on carbon number two. If I count from the right, the first substituent, which is CL, comes on carbon number three. So now, how do I decide? Three or two? So I'll take the smaller number for the first one. So this will become carbon number one, carbon number two, carbon number three, carbon number four, carbon number five, and carbon number six. Then I label my substituents. I've got my methyl and I've got my chloro. Just move halos out of the way. So I've got methyl and chloro. Methyl is in carbon number two and chloro is in carbon number four. So what do I do? I'll just zoom in just a little bit so I can see clearly. Yeah. So now I name them alphabetically between M and C, which comes first? C comes before M. So in the name, it will be 4-chloro and 2-methyl. And the main chain has 6 carbons, so it is a hexane. All right. Since we're on this, I might as well draw the skeletal formula for this for practice. So I've got 6 carbons in the main chain. That's 3, 4, 5, 6. And carbon number 2 has a methyl group. And carbon number 2, 4 has a chlorine. And that's it. This is 2-methyl and 4-chloro. So 4-chloro, 2-methyl, hexane. Let's scroll down to some more examples. So I've got two molecules here. Let's take a look at them. The pink and the blue. So let's name the one in the blue first. Now I've got a three carbon haloalkane, so that's easy, that's propane, but I've got two branches. Both of them are my, two, sorry, substituents. I shouldn't call them branches. Branches is kept for alkyl groups. I've got two substituents, bromines. From the left, the first one is on carbon number two. From the right, the first one is on carbon number one. So I choose from the right, one, two, and three. So I've got two bromines, one's on two, one's on one, so it's one, comma, two. This, because I have two bromines, it's dibromo and a three carbon chain, so it's propane. That's how I name this. Let's go here. This one also is a three carbon chain. I also have two substituents, both bromine, so it's dibromo again, but numbering from the left because that will give me the smallest number. And this one is both on the same carbon, so it's one, one dibromo propane. See, it's as easy as alkanes. Some more examples here. This one in green and blue. Let's talk with the green one first. I got four carbons and I've got two options. If I count from the left, the first substitute is on carbon number two. The second one is on carbon number two and the third one is on carbon number three. If I count from the right, the first one is on two, the second one is three and the third one is three. So now, why is this difficult? Because the first one from the left is also on two and the first one from the right is also on carbon number two. So that's a tie. Then I look for the second substituent from either side. The second one from either side is on carbon number two from the left and carbon number three from the right. So therefore the left side wins. Hence, this is my right numbering because this will result in two, two, three versus from this side will result in two, three, three. So when it's two, two, then the second one favors. So now that's the numbering and I've got bromo, chloro and methyl. And in alphabetically, B, then C, then M. B, C, and M. And the main, main chain is four carbons. So this is 2-bromo, 3-chloro, because C before M, and 2-methyl. That's alphabetical order. And the chain is how long? The chain is four carbons long, so it's butane. Pretty long name, huh? And... I forgot the skeletal for the previous ones, but this one would be one, two, three, four, carbon, two, three, four. Carbon number two has bromine and methyl. So it's uh, methyl and bromine this way. And three has chloro. So that's the skeletal for two bromo, three chloro, two methyl butane. Now let's look at the guy here. I've got, what do I have? I have, what you call it, three in a chain. And I've got Cl, F, Br, methyl. So four different add-ons. Cl, Br, methyl, and F. And count from the left, the first one is carbon number one. Count from the right, the first one is carbon number one. Then that's a tie. Second one. Second one, carbon number two from the left. Second one, carbon number two from the left. Then the third one. Third one, carbon number also carbon number two on the left. And so on. You'll realize that from the left, it'll come out to positions one, two, two, three. From the right, one, two, two, three. So it's a complete tie from all sides. So what do we do? We do is then 
we look at uh, the alphabetical order. So of all of these four, BR comes first. That's on B comes before everything and that's on position number two from both sides. So that's a fail. Then you got C, chloro, fluoro, and methyl. So C is the guy that decides it because from the left, it's on one. From the right, it's on three. So after a lot of debate, this is where we come up to it. One, two, and three. So now the, long, the name is pretty long. And so the alphabetically, the BR comes first. So it's two bromo. Then chloro. So it's one chloro. Then three fluoro. Fluoro, sorry, fluoro, and then methyl. Methyl is on two, so two methyl, and four, three carbons long, hence propane. Mighty long name. All right. Anyways, so just a couple of more to practice. Let's look at these ones. Now this methyl is in the main chain. I got one, two, three, four in the main chain. That's butane. This way, this way, this way. It's the same thing. And then my branches are this methyl, this Cl, and this CH3. Two methyls and one Cl. From the left, position number one. Position number two. From the right, the first guy, position number two. Then the second guy. So from the left, the second guy is also position number two. From the right, the second guy is position number three. So the left wins. So my numbering becomes um, one, two, two, three, and four. So I've got what as my name in this case? So I've got the methyls, which are two twos, and chloro on three. But chloro comes before M, so it's writing-wise, I write the chloro first. And then the two methyls, dimethyl, and then the parent chain. Parent chain is four carbons long, it's a butane. No double bonds yet, okay? Then the last example we have. One, two, three, four again in the main chain, but now I've got only methyl and iodine. And from the left, the first branch is on carbon number two. From the right, the first substitute is on carbon number one. So I'll go from the right. This one's pretty easy. So I got one, two, three, and four. And iodo before methyl, so it's one iodo, three methyl, iodo is, iodo is what we write for iodine, three methyl, butane. Okay. <sighs> oh, you can draw the skeletal for both of these. The one on top, since I have the four carbon butane, one, two, three, four, and the branches are two, two dimethyl, so two, two dimethyl, and three chloro. The bottom one is butane again, one, two, three, four, but you've got iodine on the first one, so I'll draw iodine like this, and you got that's one, then three methyl. There you go, three methyl right there. All right. That's a little for these guys. So that's one part of the naming done. One last thing we got a name for halogenoalkanes, cyclohalogenoalkane. So here are two examples of cyclohalogenoalkanes or cycloalkanes with halogens. The first one is simple. You got six carbons in a cyclic chain, cyclohexane, and you got only one chlorine, and that's on carbon number one. Therefore, that's why and carbon number one well, not because it's right here, but because it's the carbon that has the chlorine. So this is called one chloro cyclohexane all right now this one is more fun i got chlorine and methyl and either this can be one and two or one and two and between these two they're not important one is more important than the other that's not the case so how do we decide we decide alphabetically in this case the cl the chlorine c comes before the methyl ka m so that's my numbering sequence and the name becomes one chloro and two methyl cyclohexane. Pretty long name, eh? That's the naming for halogenoalkanes, guys.